I think that is the operative word. Rono Zikruto, uh, the chairman of the Level Organization. You can remove your mic, that unnecessary noise. Um, thank you. Uh, Dr. Emily, Dr. Emily Korir, my daughter, um, the entire leadership of Taunet Nelel, and the community of my people in Australia, Chamge. Chamge, Bogi. Because time is gone, and we've had great moment together, I will be interjecting with challenging words, but because of the average age, I will be doing you disservice if I speak completely in challenging, because some words may escape you. I want to, you will allow me to timbre my presentation with a few challenging expressions. Is that okay? Yes. For the sake of our parents who are here tonight, I will uh, somewhere um, uh, put some challenging words. I'm not really comfortable with the system. I think you need to change the ambience and, and, and reduce the echo. <clears throat> um, some of you are seeing me for the first time as in physical appearance uh, because I'm sure through the social media and the media you have been able to access and know about me. Some of you have known me, of course, through my daughter, who is your friend, Emi Koske, who really worked so hard on your behalf uh, after leaving Australia in her last trip. She made sure she could speak to me from Lagos, not through audio, she wanted to look at my eye as she emphasized, I must come. So, um, so Emmy, Emily, Emmy, uh, Corinne, and Ruta, my daughter, and Alfred could not give me a break uh, until I agreed to change my plans and join you this particular season when you're celebrating your meeting and get together why I'm here today. Receive therefore greetings from Nairobi, from Kenya. Receive greetings from the leadership of the country, from members of parliament. They know I am, I was to come. In fact, we were planning to come with a number of members of parliament to join you. I'm sure if God allow us in the next invitation, we will work and plan early enough and I will come in company of members of parliament and senate in our country to come and visit you purposely to have a conversation together for your progress and best wishes for your life in Australia. In the interest of time, I will not speak much about myself in honor of the testimony given by Amy Korea. She, it is amazing. I have followed and I have been thrilled and thankful to God on how her light was preserved 
for this generation. May God bless you, Lady. Keep, keep it on. I am a Christian leader. I've been served the Lord for over 45 years full time. And then another five years, partially, for 50 years in the service of God and society. I was born normal like any other child and was able to play with other children for five years. At the age of five, I suffered polio, a disease that shattered my, the dream of my childhood. But at the age of 18, 19, I heard about the gospel of Christ. I came from an ancestral recognition of us in our society, an ancestral believer. We never were Christians, not Muslims. And we didn't understand the organized religion. Not until I met a preacher my wife and our cousin were members of that fellowship and they invited me. Little did Rose know that she was making a husband for herself. I came to Jesus and later on I married her. Um, and I give God the glory um, to date. I will not give you the details of others, but God blessed us with this woman. We have four adult children, and I have eight grandchildren. The first ones of them are now in university, and I'm glad you can see how young I am. <laughs> A few years ago, God put in my heart the burden of our community, the challenging community. When we were faced with the reality that the long-serving leader was going to exit the stage of leadership, he led us from 1955 and he was retired in the year 2002. And after that, we had a moment in a community that had known one leader for 50 years. We were a disoriented society because we became a target of the social rebellion against post-independent leadership under Jose Jomo Kenyatta and then Moi, we became the target of what they call second liberation in politics of our country. And our people went into a mass depression because we were really associated with a failed system. So the young tax in politics of our country, Moi became an epitome of misrule after independence. The community of Kalenjins was sucked from position of power, and our people felt like they were isolated, they were rejected, and God raised me and gave me an opportunity to speak to them and speak to the nation. Came boldly. Some of you don't know. Some of you may have heard. And I was there for them by the grace of God. And after that, we, we therefore started a movement, a more community development society, with a vision as a theme, a strong society in a strong nation. And we thought we needed to strengthen our people and we provided what we call mass counseling for the community and the people of Kenya. We did so for about 15 years and we looked for three things. One, 
was to enhance and make sure that our community has a succession, leadership succession process from the post-independent leadership and two generations that came in between to provide leadership for the third generation in our country. And by the grace of God, God gave us the ability and the present president of our republic, William Samoy Ruto, became the leader that came into and occupied the space. Lead our community, led our community in moments of anxiety, and finally, he became the president of the Republic of Kenya, coming from that. Second, are you not happy about that? Second, or you are thrilled by the information. Second was to enhance the unity of our people. Because organized societies dominate disorganized ones. I want to repeat. Organized societies dominate organized ones, disorganized ones. If your society is disorganized, prepare for organized cultures to dominate, to take over you, to relead you, to take advantage over you, and you will be diminished. Prior to 1840, the Berlin Conference, which subdivided Africa, took over Latin America and the rest of the world, including Asia. The population of the world, Europe, was 150 million, all of them. Africa as a continent was 90 million. Asia, which includes India, Malaysia, all those countries from Asia, there were 602 million at that time. Then plus um, North America, South, all of them put together, outside the European, the continents, other continents accounted for 750 million people on Earth. And yet, European leadership under their kingdoms, the Kingdom of Germany at that time, the Kingdom of Spain, the Kingdom of Belgium, the United Kingdom, and all those countries like France, and all those countries, Italy, all of them, 150, could dominate 750 people on earth. Because all of us, we were committed and very disorganized lot. In fact, I agree with Museveni when he said, we would not have been colonized if we were organized. Ethiopia became the only continent, I mean the only country that was not colonized. The reason is, under Menelik II, in 1882, to 1913, Menelik II would not accept to be dominated by Italians. He was a great fighter. He was a nurturer. He used arrows. And finally, he accessed the guns, which were powder, and was able to expand his kingdom, Abyssinia, and became a country that could not be ruled. Ladies and gentlemen, any organized society will not be dominated, but they will be part of the negotiators and they will be able to survive. Yes. So that is what led us into having a conversation in encouraging the community of Kalenji, 12 of them, seven major, to bring them together, that you cannot be anything in the Republic of Kenya, neither can you negotiate for anything anywhere in the world if you become a dismembered society. Kipsigis cannot win without Nandis, the Tugans, the Marraquets, the Sabaoth, the Sengwer, and others, unless you are together. 
During that time, I introduced a theme. Oti ge bo utere, abo isuge bo ubai chalelach. Did you hear about Oti ge utere? How many heard that? It was through Kasafem for many times. Thank you so much. Some of you were young at that time. Third and final was to encourage the community that there is no people that can sustain their existence on earth unless they are empowered economically. If you cannot work for wealth, if you cannot work to be part of a conversation in the world, you will be dominated by the rich. And unless you are part of the production, you will be suffering hunger, you cannot feed your children. Have you ever heard of a saying that whoever puts bread on the table controls what? Oh, you've never heard about that? It's a common literature that it controls the pie. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak to you today, our people were transformed. 15 years of speaking to them, we produce a very strong society that were being graced by God on the table of negotiation in the country that we were able to produce the second president in 60 years as a people and as a community. Wow. We did the second thing. We visited our people in diaspora. I'm being selfish in my presentation, and I'm not apologetic about that. There is time to speak about the nation. Today I'm speaking to you, our children in diaspora, and our sisters and brothers. So whoever is here, by default or by plan, you are a member of this society. Listen to this. It is home. Maneno ya nyumbani. Are you hearing that? Maneno ya nyumbani. Leji jine negete den jugo ngalega kwa. Uu maogas. Ba leji. Chugo den. Ngalega kwa. Can you greet the neighbor next to you? Ine maneno ya nyumbani. Chugo ngalega kwa. We discovered that our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters spread all over the world were living in a very difficult situation because of conflict of cultures and they are interacting with other cultures and we never prepared them when they were going out. We sold shambas, we raised money, we sent them to America, we send them to UK, Europe, and we send them. In fact, at that time, Australia was not so much frequented, not until a few of us came the other day. And I want to apologize on behalf of all of us who participated in sending you to these foreign countries. We did so without preparing you to meet a new culture. And thank you for being resilient and trying your best to become, to be able to swim, as my young uh, daughters were saying, to be able to swim in a multicultural experience. And you came to Europe that brought the gospel of Christ to Africa and told us to discard our own cultures and traditions because theirs was superior, because it was, about, it was about the Savior who rose from the dead and is in heaven. We climbed the mountain of their civilization. When we reached at the top of the plateau, we found Wasungus had already left there. And they were spiraling downwards. We don't know where they were going. And they left the Bible and let charge an auditorium on the hill, empty of them. Their sons and daughters are not there. We found they have left their religion to oblivion. And we asked ourselves, should we follow them? We discovered that when they taught us about the Old Testament, 
as they blended an interpretation with the New Testament, the whole of the Old Testament be resembled our own ancestral worship. Theirs was better organized, ours was a bit scattered and interfered over time. It confirmed the sayings and legendary sayings of our elders that connected us to the Jew community and culture. Either we are part of the proselytes or we are part of the lost tribes of Israel, ten of them, or we were uncles and nieces coming from the family and the lineage of Lord, because those names are common and they are there in our own expressions in our culture. We made a decision that although our brothers and sisters from Europe are no longer on the top of the plateau of the faith they brought to us, in any way, guess, we discovered that faith works anyway. And we say we will not return back, we will maintain that faith, we will sustain our society with it, and we will keep our people together. So largely, over 80% of our community, we are Christian in terms of faith and persuasion. We are Africans believing we are an Afro-Christian community that God speaks to us through our religion and through our faith. We made a choice that should we be disorganized as a community or we better be organized. We went into analytical attention. Don't mind, I am going to be short. I'm trying to uh, give you a background of some of the three few things that I want to share with you. We chose an organized one because sociologists say, and I'm a student of social science, anthropology, psychology, human relations, and so on. I did them in um, uh, various degrees. I says at the over disorganized society. It is said that a state of a society which is disorganized is characterized by a breakdown of effective social control. A disorganized society, because of lack of social control, results in a lack of a functional integration between and amongst groups that exist. Also, it produces what we call a conflicting social attitudes. And finally, it, is, it produces a personal maladjustment. People who become victim of disorganization lack stability in terms of decision making and choices they make. People who are disintegrated as a society, they lose a very important anger of their lives of identity and they become victims of identity crisis. Few minutes ago, young lady was talking up here and she said there is an increment in mental cases in and amongst our communities. When Europe removed God from their schools, removed God from their parliaments, removed God from their own families, they began to disintegrate as a race. And in few years, they are a minority that is going to cry for protection because they no longer produce children. If you do not have a family, if you do not raise children, then you have no generation that can inherit the system. Many years ago, there was a, 
a European uh, scholar and uh, a philosopher, and he said, you know, we have made Europe, after World War II, a garden. The rest of the world is a jungle. So we receive the gospel from the garden, and we have appreciated it. And we have sent our children to the garden to learn how to make a garden so that they can come back to Africa, they can come to Asia, they can come back to South America, they can come back to uh, countries like um, Caribbean islands where our, most of our ancestors were taken as slaves, into Pacific where Asians and Africans met and blended so that we can improve our jungles and make it to be like a European garden. When our sons and daughters came, we discovered the European made a garden, but they forgot to maintain the family. And the families, they are aging as a society, and we are following them soon, very fast. Africa is really lucky by now, we are 75% young, but the trend we are taking is that in the next 40 years, we will be reversing and following Europe as a dying continent. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come with a message that we need number one. I have a special message for you in diaspora that number one, you must be an organized community. You have no choice about it. I repeat and tell your friends, wherever they are, and all of you that are watching me all over the world, whatever time you are in, I am telling you, for you to survive, you must, and I repeat and use the word must, get organized as a community. History has a testimony of communities and nations that survive through their organization. One, it must be an intentional living. When you live in Europe, live in this continent of Sino-Asia, I want to tell you, my friends, that as you live in this continent, they call it the southern, is it the south of the south? Is that how do you call it? Describe this subcontinent. How do you call it? Down under. Yeah, you call it the, in the south. Down, down under. As you live in the south, I want to tell you, live intentionally with destiny in mind. That's my topic tonight, so that it can organize my thoughts. Having been in public, and speaking, you tend to speak everything when it is not necessary. I am organizing my thoughts around this theme. Living intentionally with a destiny in mind. I want to give a case study, not as an academic exercise, but as a motivational reference about the Jewish people as a classic diaspora. A political analyst by the name Daniel J. Ellison, in his findings analyzing the political reasons why Israel, the Jewish nation, was persecuted more than any nation in the world over a long time, and yet it survived. For 3,500 years, after serving for 400 years as slaves in the land of Egypt, Israel went through many other thousands of years, 2,500 to be specific, according to historians, Israel went through a lot of persecution 
but yet they survive. May I read a next cup of his research? Would you allow me then? I want to present some of the in-depth so that when we address some of the challenges we face because of the modern fourth industrial revolution impact of digital world and what it is doing to families and lives of individuals. I'm going to mention it in passing in the interest of those who need help in the society. That things which are outside you are dictating the kind of behavior you may adopt sometimes to your detrimental uh, impact and sometimes to your progression. Allow me to quote just an extra quote. There is little doubt that the Jewish people represents the classic diaspora phenomenon of all time. Are you considering yourself as members in diaspora from your communities? Is that true? I want to give you a classic community and nation that survived over time, and it is a classic one. He continued, and I quote, Indeed, it seems that the term diaspora itself originated to, the describe, to describe the Jewish condition. The Jewish diaspora has existed for at least 2,600 years. And if certain local traditions are accurate, perhaps even longer, it has existed alongside a functioning Jewish state. And for almost precisely 2,000 years, without any state recognized as politically independent. Moreover, for 1,500 years, the Jewish people existed without an effective political center in their national territory. That is to say, exclusively as a diaspora community, so much so that the institutions of the Jewish community in Eretz, Israel, were themselves modeled after those of the diaspora and the Jews functional as a diaspora community within their own land. Finally, nevertheless, the Jewish people not only preserve their integrity as an ethno-religious community, but continue to function as a polity throughout their long history through the various conditions of state and diaspora. End of quote. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. The Jewish nation became the most persecuted nation on earth between the year BC 500, when I'm going to read the scripture referring to that. Israel has gone through many persecutions, rejection, uprooting, being uprooted from their own country, their own nation. They have been exiled, they have been dominated by big powers the Babylonian Empire, the, the Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empire. Finally, they came back to their country in 1948. They came back to the Middle East to settle as a nation. Today, for every one Jew, there are five enemies, but it is still surviving as a country and the promise that God gave it to them. I want to say this. Their secret is within what these historians say. And I want to give you some few meanings of words. One, divining ethno-religious group. It means, in general, that ethno-religious communities divine their ethnic identity by both ancestral heritage and religious affiliation. What can protect and preserve a people is cultural heritage to religious identity. I want to repeat it again. When you become colorless, you belong to nothing. 
you can as well be divine as nothing. That you can be anything, anywhere, anytime. You are reducing your humanness and you are denied of your identity. A friend of mine told me at the arising of ISIS, when the young daughters in Britain, Great Britain, where the sun never um, sets as an empire, when you are in the south, it is shining on the great United Kingdom. He told me we are surprised that the young girls from a developed world, advanced technology, would rush to Syria and Lebanon and join our brothers, the Muslims, and join ISIS to be their wives, to carry swords, and join that group according to European psychology. They wondered, what is wrong with our children? There is something wrong. If you deny a people identity, they, they themselves, if they lack a culture and identity that directs their behavior and defines who they are, they will end up eating up themselves as a people. If you lack identity, you will destroy yourself in the midst of great civilization in this great continent. You will become a waste. You will even lose your direction. You don't know why you are in this country. You can't even remember <coughs> that your poor mother in Africa who had to sacrifice all to make sure that you are in Melbourne, in Sydney, in which other city? All the states of this country that one day Girona will be coming home, Kipkum will be coming home, and we will be waiting for her at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport or Eldore International Airport, Moye International Airport or Kisumu so that the mama who has had her foot in a slipper type of shoes spreading the toes because nothing brought back them because it was spread by poverty, they think Jerome will come home and when she will be coming, she will bring a shoe that will return all the toes together like that of a human being. And you are dead. You are destroyed in this country. I have come with a prayer and goodwill for you that God will use Taunet Nelim to raise you up from the dung hill into sitting with kings and rise up from your despair and become hopeful. Ethno-religious group usually has a shared history and cultural traditions of their own, sometimes referred to as a form of religion. People could go to have something that binds them together. I want to tell you, I, if God will change his idea about the second coming of Christ, there is no hell, there is no heaven, I will still choose Christianity as a club because it made sense from the day I became a Christian and changed me to be a man. Look at me, my friend. I'm a brother of that faith. Do I look stupid? Am I not a man enough? Don't you listen to me, I'm an intellectual being. I have a hell of a brain. Don't you hear me? I'm not a God. But this is what the Savior did when he came into my life. Take me in my generation. To put me under the destro of makers of history. Nobody can ignore me, my generation. You may ignore me because I don't belong to your generation. And I, don't make, I may not make sense because I don't need to make it anyway. I've done it already. That's why you have any around. That makes sense. And truly, I'm the father, by the way. You don't ask. You say, what's not? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
The second thing that I want to mention in terms of divination of words before I conclude is destiny. Somebody said, and I listened to that, that without identity there is no destiny. If you cannot identify yourself, you don't know who you are. You could not destiny, my friend. You are available to disintegrate and be swept by stronger characters into the sea of oblivion and disappear into the rubbish pit of history. No one will revive you. You will disappear just like keep a pale. Let me tell you, my friend, if you want to have a destiny, you must have an identity. So, no identity, no destiny. I repeat it again. No identity, no destiny. I repeat it again. Listen to me. I repeat it again. I, I, you don't have to remember me, but remember this after I've left. A person's destiny is everything. Listen to that. A person's destiny, this is how sociologists and anthropologists have concluded after many research. I've read a book by Professor Howard Gardner. I, 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 I like some of his books. He's one of the anthropologists, a professor at Harvard University for many years, actually for over 50 years. He wrote a book amongst the many books he has written. I recommend you read it, The Leading Minds. And he, he, he mentioned 11 characters, including Mark McCarthy, um, uh, the black American um, activist Reverend Martin Luther he referred to a woman by the name Margaret Meads who was an anthropologist who worked in the Central America he mentioned also Margaret Thatcher in his book Destiny I, I mean The Leading Minds he said this leadership is necessary in divining our people in every generation. And I wish to quote in his book. He said, all societies remain among us groups. Not until leadership comes to provide definition. When I was sitting there, as I watched Ruta and his team, and as I saw you coming to sing, I say, Adelaide, you talk about Melbourne. You talk about Sydney. This is what leadership does. Thank you, son, for coming up. Until leadership comes to provide definition. The same book says, the history of the world is not about common men, but it is about leaders as they divine their generation. Friends, I wish to say this while remembering this great writer that every generation has an agenda for itself and there are leaders to provide leadership to define that agenda. When God raises one from Melbourne, raises two, raises three in Adelaide, did you say Canberra? Did you say which other cities and in diaspora, my friends gravitate around a leader, gravitate around leadership. Therein shall be your potential that will be exposed and, and produced out and you will find the best of you if leadership is available. So don't be jealousy, don't feel affected when he calls you, it is unnecessary agent of change and transformation in your leadership, in your life. You can be better if you gravitate around. Every generation needs a gravitas area. And thank you, Ruta, and all your teams. Uh, Sarah, who took care of us yesterday with Ruta, made us comfortable. And um, she really spoke to us, and we felt at home by having her. May God bless you, the leadership of the Kothaunet Nelil. A person's destiny is everything that happens during your lifetime 
and including what will happen in the future, it's also about the end. In his book, Seven Habits, a man, an effective leader should remember, Stephen Covey said, number one, I'm giving you three. One, you must be proactive in your life. Don't sit there until someone moves you. Be pro productive. Be innovative. Proactive. Be innovative. Be creative. Think about, think outside the box. Don't be a victim of just giving up. When the door is closed here, there is another door on the other side. If I sat down in my time and say I've lost my legs, Jackson, you are Bure Kapisa. In fact, I remember Nelda in 1969 who told me you will stay around the house until you die. You will not go anywhere. If I listen to that person, I will not be in Melbourne tonight. A story is told in the book of Kings in the Bible that there were four levels and there was a great famine in Israel. And because nobody was getting into the city and no one could go out, they could not get arms. They could not be assisted. And they asked a question one day, why sit here till we die? And they rose up one morning and said, if we go to the city, we will die with those who are dying because they have, they have no hope. They said, let us rise up and go where the enemy is. Those who are threatening us are. If they spare us, we will get food. If they kill us, we will die anyway. When they rose up, in a decision of rising up, it is honored by God in all eternity. When you rise up, God's company joins you and creates opportunity for you you will be surprised by the potential that you have. Rise up! Don't sit till you die. I know some of you because of some challenges you encountered in Australia. When you came, you thought it was a land of honey and, and, and milk and it is easy living. So you came as a lazy boy and lazy woman and you thought this country is raining with money. And even you forgot that you came here to do a course that would help you. You became a loiterer around and slept without remembering to wake up. This country for you to leave, my friend, you got to work. He met a war met a bone in Africa. Mami ne gure ne ngi je war mo mami ga kama je la kwa ne mo le ka komase mami ga komase mo ni ni ko vri kita ne ne ke ni. The policies of opening their borders for you to come is guided by knowledge and intention of the nation. There is what, when they open a door for Africa, the Commonwealth nations that speaks English from Asia, from Pacific, when they allow them to come to this country, it is not by chance. It is by a state policy. They are targeting a certain product that cannot be done by the citizens of this country, they believe they can import labor to be able to do it in the interest of sustainability of this nation. If you cannot meet that standard, prepare yourself for four things. Number one, to become a homeless person in this country. Number two, to be deported back to your country. Number three, to bury your head in things in deception, the things that can destroy you. You become a drug addict so that you, you escape reason. You are trying to create a reason to be absent from reality and reduce yourself to a zombie so that you create an excuse of being sympathized with. Four, you commit suicide. You take your life you wait for others there as they come. Or five, you rise up and take advantage of your potential and change your direction and God will lift you up because you have a community 
of Taunet, Lenel, near you. They will pray for you, they will support you, they will help you, and you rise up again, and you begin a new beginning. And God will change us. Take my words seriously. My tummy in Jigo, we ate tummy again. I'm a good name, Jigi, you're making a little boy. If you have no value that you are adding to this society, they will revisit the laws of immigration to make sure that they shut you up. For example, he was still a law before you. They got children in an environment where their grandfathers worked very hard to develop the physical infrastructure to make this country great. Their sons and great sons, great um, grand grandsons, became lazy. And their fathers are aging. Nobody to run the country and all developmental infrastructure in the nation, which requires the strength. So It's only me who's allowed to say that. <laughs> because I'm your father, I'm your grandfather, I'm your elder brother, if you are anywhere near me. But I want to tell you this. Leave Wabusan. Big up for the engine. King and big crowd and the one come good. For four things. We have what we call a national and community bride. We don't make decisions because of some short-term interest. We make decisions based on our bride. We are poor liars. We don't know how to say Allah. So you women don't push your brother so much. <laughs> because we are poor liars. Are you still with me? Are you still listening? Yes. We are known for four things. One, we are very courageous and brave people. I tell you, you go on it. Now he wait. You are going to do it. Come on, he wait. He wait. He wait. He wait. He wait. He wait. We are brave. We are a brave society. I just we are for prayer. Number two, we are honest. I tell you, when I think I'm on board, not my agency or our set of our betters. I tell you, we are honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can I? Only you. Who is it? I will. Can I still speak that in English? Want me to say that in English? That is a woman. She managed it. Be careful, honest. And that is why the other will get. Maybe no me. You are more more men. Watch out, baby. Oh, me. We run. You are looking at your anthropological study. How much you read? Never read. Never buy. Wait. The last governor. Never get that again. If you want to rule Kenya, <coughs> what are the factors that you need to, con to consider? Well, number one, and which community can one again tell by say, hey, lady, what are you saying? I'm one, Jerry, never yet up Kenya, net I, over yet up, okay, Kenya, the most governable society. And we can put the land of what to take what, 
they are interested. The children are interested by that. Number two, being a college, college is the most ungovernable society, but the most honest and trusted. Because they make their decision based on their pride. You have a money with that, while you can get a rain game, you can get a rain game, you can get a rain game. That's a challenge. You can get a rain game, you can get a rain game. Ano lekay ba mo mime? Kule kita balengin, pum! Ay lekay mo tungge ba ni? Utuwer, banda banda. Yan arab niya gay. Yan arab matiyam ginger. Lagi tayong tayong taramit, lagi amarte tayong tayong gay. Hindi ko. Ilo mo tungge tayong jugari niya. Banda banda. Tayo sa tayo sa kalu. Ayo ni sa nito ni. Sing here now because you are honest. Number two, you are faithful. You can let him hear ye again, young lady. Oh, yeah, he and the guitar calling him, you know, you can be trusted. You can be trusted. The one that being a personal bride, meaning will let her boot IIB, some of the original. Anyway, over the years, something has developed in Big York. We see again that go. He told me I was a bit in the diaspora. Why did he give me your love when you have money? We get from that more, more okay. We buy something again. That's all, man. We see again that go. We talk about it. Talk to you. Talk about it. 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 Are you still with me? Call it in me for I have been one. That you must have what Stephen Covey mentioned. So I've just mentioned one, and allow me to mention two, and I'm not elaborating. The second one is say, think win win in life. All the time when you are making an argument, remember to be on the side of the one you are arguing with and begin to feel for that person so that you have a win-win. So all the time God demand your way. That is how to sustain marriages. The reason why we marry and stay within marriage is not because it is pleasurable but because it is the right thing. We need therefore to have a win-win. If you argue with your husband, argue with your husband and be on the other side. How do you expect him? How would you have expected him to expect of you? And if you are arguing with your wife, be on her side and think that way. So think win-win for you to survive here. More boy, I wait to hear money. When you to go as is here, you can log in again, log in out. I wait to log in the game and I got married. I wait to. She told me, "Give me a call. You are not going to go see that way." Kundi lepas dia marin zani, namu koi, ilepas dia namu jenuan, ilepas dia namu jenuan. Koi koi, kini kita koi koi ya tin. Lawu cuma mi mule mana ya, lengai lah kasi lah. Mule mule mana? Tahu ni tu koi koi. Abang abi, kau sen, mule mule. Tin lain mage, okey suai ke, mesu ni. Kalau nak 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 nak, tu je tu boleh ambil. Lagi ni je, leh leh, leh lagi tu je bagi anda je bu. Dia kau ni tu ni sama ini, ni kap iya tu stretch marks of God. You are an honourable woman. Tapi tu ni sama ini, ni kap mai tu pasi gisi. Kau ikut dalam letih kisah, tu je sabar melo. Kami juga ibu bapa barat negi gua komen. Mula sini tu, kalau ibu rendi, mami ibu rendi, mana mesti suai tak ibu rendi tak ni, ibu rendi tak kalah. Mamu rendi, mamu rendi, mamu rendi nak, mamu rendi tak ada suai. Negi orang juga mamu rendi suai, kau garu, kamu kau mamu rendi suai, kau kau gitu gitu pun kau suai ni ya deh. Oh, right, and I have to move on to the other side. So, you are there again.
there is more hope for a fool than for him. Anyone who comes to this country and says I am a master of my own destiny, better is a fool than him. Because his destruction is imminent. All people who have progressed in life are people who listen to others. And they can surrender to others to teach them. When you come to Australia, look for brothers and sisters who have progressed. And join them. Don't join them that we have chosen the way of getting lost. And it is important you make your organizations known so that chairman, when we are sending children to come to this country, you are the ones receiving them at the airport. So the first thing you do is to orientate them on how to live in this country. Don't allow someone who comes from the club who has been converted into a sex worker, taken advantage of because of our own disparate life. She doesn't like, he doesn't like, but he has no way of doing it. He's the one taking that child at the airport because he will recruit that particular person into that movie. I'm asking you, why I have come and joined you is because your organization is very important in saving the future generation. Wow. Also, to be wise in your own eyes means you think your understanding is the best above all others. You must appreciate and for me to grow. You can see I'm quoting from other people. I appreciate other things who have been on this way. I'm not the only one. I'm not the inventor. In fact, what I'm saying today was said by my grandparents many years ago in their own ways. They were not stupid. That is why we are still alive today. We are still there as a community. My friends, the second thing is what we call divine destiny given by God to humanity. If God is controlling your destiny, then the spiritual destiny within you will guide you when God is leading your steps one by after another. In Psalms 37, 2, verse, I mean 37, 2 to 7, this is what David said. That the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Listen to this. Though he fall, because that doesn't, doesn't mean we are perfect. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. And he said, David, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. For nor his descendants bed and bread. I speak the same words to you, my sons and daughters. May God uphold you. In all your challenges in this country, may he uphold you and be like David, that you were young and one day you will be old and you will have never seen the righteous left by God, nor their children bed bread. I'm speaking to your children. May God prosper you that you produce children and those whom you have, God will feed them, will enable you not to miss bread on the table of your house until your old age as you exit this world. You need to have a destiny. You need to have a destiny. My friends, I wish to conclude by mentioning the following to you. Number one, If you have to have a destiny, you must be aware that believing in materialism is a false premise and policy for your life. 
materialism is not the only thing you need. You require more than money. Therefore, don't overwork your futile life until you forget yourself. One of the greatest challenges of this generation is what we call self-neglect. Soon you lose yourself, you neglect yourself, and you disintegrate. When you are knocking in, knocking out, I know some problems that are forcing you to do more than necessary. Some of them which are known. Number one is mismanagement of your resources. You are wasteful in your life. You are not organized. That you earn your salary, you earn your money, the first day, in the second day, you no longer have anything, you are begging. Disorganization. Have a financial discipline on how you manage your money and learn from the best practices of others. Number two, I know what forces you to work more than it is necessary is the pressure we give you from home. And we are asking you, Mama Fulani amejekewa na mtoto yake, Mama Fulani amenunuliwa gari, Mama Fulani amenunuliwa shamba, we ukumbuki tulikuhusia shamba, and they give you unnecessary pressure. Come on, get organized. You must meet your bills first. Make sure you can maintain yourself in this country. Don't mind about us. Even if we don't build the house, we will live in Kenya and we will survive. It is you. If you don't have money, your house will be closed the following day. Come on, my son. I speak on behalf of your fathers and mothers who have not visited here and they don't know what is happening. And they are listening to me right now as I tell you this. I'm not being brutal to them, but I'm being realistic to you. Come on. Maintain yourself, first of all, to be able to live in, the, in this country in comfort. Are you hearing me? The third, which is pushing you, is your lifestyle. If you run around and get some lazy women, and by accident, they use their assets, and something happens, soon, you are a minority, my friend, before the laws. Soon, you are being demanded for upkeep. So you must lock in three times, four times, one for maintaining. A certain lady who tells you, you will be seeing with Jesus, 14. Iri, when you leave the morning, you say, Jerere, Iri, Jerere, Iri, Kame. You lock in, lock out. They have locked in and locked you out until you are losing balance in your life. Control yourself if you want to survive, my friend. Take one woman. It is not expensive to stay with one and be loyal to one another. It is really affordable. <laughs> you will lock in more than necessary. Are you hearing me? I found a lot of them in another continent. I think you are better here. And, and keep on like that. Be better. Don't, don't be cheated. Materialism is not the key. But Albert Einstein said, and he was a scientist, that without ethical law, there is no salvation for humanity. Second, without direction, it means you are undermining your purpose in life. If you do not have a direction, you will be undermining your purpose in life. So you must be committed. That is about destiny. That you've got a purpose that you are living for. There is what we call universal purpose of your existence on earth. My father told me, 
There are three things that matters and you can die for. Number one is freedom. Number two is dignity. And number three is family. I asked him, Dad, he was a, he was a military officer in World War II. I asked him, why family, he said. He said, because family is the epicenter of human preservation. It is about preserving humanity. And he told me, son, you will be morally guilty if you are presiding over the extinction of your family or your clan or your society. You are morally guilty. And he said it was handed over by Boyot, Arab Chief Kirwa, any meeting. Like he said, we could not think Arab Parad, any he said to give up a bit mark and then go sit up. Who said, I have a power to Where is it? I have a power to go. Joshua, Kipto, Akwerik, Tunesubi. I am telling you, never preside over the extinction of our family. Ngoyapta si langwe, kuyegi yakwe meni sechegi bogin, ngoyapta yi bintamu, kutko itila oga blago kwa, otatu ngoyipe tune itu mungu. Are you still with me? Yes. I say three things matter. One, freedom. Second, dignity. Third, family. Right? Are you hearing me? Also, I'm concluding with these words. The joy, there is joy in discerning destiny because it will calm your anxiety. When you have destiny, you will not be restless in your life. You will be peaceful. You will live a life with a lot of pride in what you are. When one designs destiny in life, it ignites a fire of pride. You do everything with pride. You know, she got number thing that discernment of destiny, you will see even the way he eats. Because he is living my even the way he dresses, the way he grooms himself or herself. You will see the way. The way you speak aloud is in your dressing, the way you appear, the way you. If you are a hopeless man, hopeless woman, you will hit in a very hopeless way. You behave in a hopeless way. You sit like a hopeless person. And you <laughs> you, you behave <coughs> hopeless man. And then there is this person who have a past purpose she has designed. When she walks across the aisle, the eyes are falling from the left. And then they, they pretend they didn't see and they you can see this person has hope. This person knows something. If I, when I move with my wheelchair around, you forget I am physically a child. And you want to know what kind of a person is this? Because I'm demonstrating both. My friends, when you have destiny in life, it motivates. You are resilient. You are determined to win. You are determined to win. There is no statement ever made by Winston Churchill like the one he made in 1941 when the Germans were facing Britain. And this is what they say. Never, never, never give up. He went to a school he had attended when he was young and he was asked one thing, can you say? He said in October 29, 1941, never, 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 never give up. No. Destiny gives you resilience. I have come to speak to you in diaspora. And I want to give you the book of Jeremiah in conclusion. 
living with great resilience. In the year 529 BC or thereabout, the children of Israel were in diaspora and they were in Babylon. He wrote this letter and I wish to share with you, my brothers and sisters, my sons and daughters in diaspora today. Here in Melbourne and those in New York and those who are in uh, Reading in England, those who are in UK, those who are in Singapore, those of us in West Africa, those of us who are listening in Bahamas, they have always been writing back. I'm writing this, I'm reading this to you. This letter, two, three thousand years later, still true because it is angered on God. In the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 4, reading to 11, and this is what I'm concluding with, Sarah. Uh, I'm not taking more than that. The Bible says, quote, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles. Then it, it used to be servants and masters. But this one, the word exile, is because they were forcefully removed. But you see that force can come from plantation and sanitation also. And it can force you out of your country. And you say, he's forced into exile by poverty. And then he lives in diaspora. This is the letter to them. Those who ran away from home by choice or by force. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Marry them. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters multiply there and do not decrease. Seven. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you in exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Number eight. For thus says the Lord of us, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For writ is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. Do not send them, declares the Lord. Finally, for thus says the Lord. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you the promise, my promise, and bring you back to this place. That was specific for the nation of Israel, but there is an underlying truth that is surpassing the land of Israel. Number 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you, to give you, come on brothers in diaspora, to give you, to give you a future and a hope. One, in diaspora, faith in God should become your anchorage. He is the God of all hosts. He has the strength to lift you up and to keep you and your families safe for the years you will be in this country. Did you hear what I said? I said God will be, faith in God becomes an anchorage that will sustain you. 
Amo iste gaye ye kapur usultab Jehova. O yun jin gaye kapur usultab Jehova. E bolomenye e nenga nasok tuul jwa e mon. Amo ista gaye yoto asoba namak. Uma was not. Kali amo amate yoto. Or what you got up to Hova? A Muri Bok. Kali, what do we say? A big day on the moon. Big day, Mamma Jehovah. Nagi to Irire, for letting the crew, Mamma, meet Jehovah back. My dear. Kali, what do we up before? Jadi demen, mesuwat, isu ini jok tak, lepas ini cuma makan lagi, makan gigi nasi kene gitu. Pokaron mami gigi apa? Kutuk terbatai. Si tebi gitu yang kita kene, in the highway of history. Kosong min, kalau tu tebi atau pun. Kaya kau kering bang, kita kejamin, usir bang mutu tebi, kita nesasip. Betul kita review. From someone who values you more than a kiss of one who doesn't mind about you. You are as good as what you can produce. You can go to hell when you have no value. I will join you. 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 O tebi a tu que eu sei como. O tebi a tu que o tebi a pinta com o nengi. A sua conta por dentro do tamanho não bate a gente. Com bem isso, com bem isso. You may be seated. Kill a Jeremiah Barwe, create wealth for yourself. Some of you, you may not come back to Africa. This will not be only the land that you will raise up families and build your wealth, but it might be your home for retirement and from here express to heaven. And the others express to her. Who is the money? Or is it with another one? Another one, ma. We need you. May the Lord move it to us. Since the time we put the number, that is the only part of the nation to make the jingle no. Manaji only part of the nation to know. Maomi, we get to show them what we know about it. about planting cards. Number three, remember to self-preserve as a society. And the only thing that will self-preserve you is family. Raise your family. Amo meter no agua y le oí sin junta. Amo y vi un trago y digo TV. Y ahí que tú me dices, y tú me dices, güey. La van a decir, y no tomo, sigue. Anda, ¿qué le dio? Fue de barra, ¿qué? ¿Qué le tomo, qué? Amo, ¿qué? Amo, ¿qué? Amo, ¿qué? Amo, ¿qué? Amo, ¿qué? Soy testa, ¿qué? Si hay que me dice, ya, la pongo, ¿qué? Ya que no voy a leer, o se lo ni, tú, o se lo ni, o se lo ni, o se lo ni. What which country did you come from, Namibia? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. And she has a daughter and others. Don't let them go. Bring them to Nairobi. Kemajuan besar, the community. 
Tâm của gói con lên không? Cô nghĩ gói dây ngoài tôi nhau ra những con này nhỏ Cô nghĩ quên nhau dây lên đây Con này nhỏ Hà lô tù đi xe đây mùi Mô kè lô lê xe tù nhỏ ra lô tù đi xe When you arrive home, we will tell you something While you are away, life continues Apa tu kalau aku itu nak jual macam ni, mana tu hiji itu? Apa tu kalau di mana cuma aku hiji itu ni? Ada hiji tapi yang di Europe, di mana hiji di mana mau? Kalau letak di sini tu, kamera. Tu mula saya tu jom. Kau nak buat apa sih tu saya ni? Bawa ini. Jika Australia, kau tunggu aku ni. Kenya, Australia. Sedio, kau nampak ni? Kau Obama. Barat Obama. Kau ibu masuk berenda tinggi itu besar. Oleh, oleh kau ini foto. Ah, nampak ni kerbau itu pun kita dah lebih. Kalau di sungguh, kalau kau di universiti, kau ibu ni juga. Kalau di rumah, kau elect ini dia. We are going to elect this boy with a funny name. How do you think of what you need to do? How do you think of what you need to do? How do you think of what you need to do? How do you think of what you need to do? How do you think of what you need to do? Now, make it a constructive, official engagement that makes you a wife makes you a husband with recognition so that law protects you and you leave not cohabiting but come out. You are adult people and make decisions without fear because you don't have two lives. You are not on Riaso. You are actually living your lives here. <laughs> You are not reacting so that one day you will come back and live your life. I'm telling you, live your life. Because when you come back to Nairobi, we will tell you the truth. While you are away, we continue. In fact, you will not recognize Nairobi in any class. We are, in fact, one of the tallest buildings in Africa is coming up in Upper Hill. My friend, you will not know whether you are in Nairobi. While you are away, we continue to <laughs> Itu ni macam ni saya ni ni macam ni tu, ni tu macam ni tak macam tak isap. Itu arjun ini, my friend. Ini saya kata sama ni, kecil. Ini saya kata kasi. Ini saya kata lagi nanti. Kau macam ni tak? Ini lagi macam ni apa saya kata macam ni? Ini lagi lagi banyak saya kata tu. But we will call some of you to become kabanas, to become MPs. We will call you. When we need you, we go. I'm going to use it later. I'm going to use it later. I'm going to use it later. What happened? Life continued. For one hour and a half, we'll leave. What's up, Jay? What's up, Jay? Also, guard yourself against deception. Alcohol is not a solution. Drugs is not a solution. Those are temporary excuse of excusing yourself away from your responsibility. In 1966, after the Great Famine, I was a young boy. My uncle gave me the traditional brew the first time in the evening, and I took it. It was traditional brew. When my mother was coming home in the evening, I wondered the fireplace had gone up. Then I asked her, why is the fireplace up there in the sky today? She was surprised. And then I slept. When I woke up in the morning, 1966, I asked Mama, what happened yesterday? She told me, you got drunk. If you get drunk, 
the fireplace will go where? I left all my testing and left that young woman. I went out and I left it. And that is why I pray. Don't go for deception. Remember, tough times will not last. And there is hope for the future. May God bless you and lift you up in diaspora. May God guide you for the days of the world. Thank you. I want to welcome to Sun to perform because we know that the time has really moved. And then once Kip Sun concludes, we'll be able to have a vote of funds. And then please do not leave your table without clearing any container, any bottle, any water, tafadali, because we need to leave the hall as clean as we found it. So please, DJ Kip Sun, on stage. <laughs> Welcome to Sun. Welcome to Sun. Welcome to Sun. Welcome to Sun. 